Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Today is an important day for science in our country. This is a milestone in HIV prevention research. It represents hope to millions of women in South Africa and around the world. UK's 10 scientists are taking the lead in HIV research and in so many fronts. And this study to stem this devastating epidemic is an example of the strategic research focus of the university to translate research to communities and to empower them. This official announcement is being simultaneously, is made simultaneously here and at the International AIDS Conference in Vienna, Austria. It gives me great pleasure to call upon our Vice Chancellor, Professor Malikapuru Makhoba, to welcome you. Thank you, Nomonde. It's a great honor and privilege to welcome all of you here for this uh, press conference. There is a team of scientists that will talk to us for about 25 minutes or so. Uh, this team is led by uh, Koleka, uh, and Dr. Sibeko, and Leila, and uh, Froelich. Uh, and on behalf of the university, again, I take this opportunity to welcome all of you. And uh, without uh, further ado, I would request that we all sit here so that we can see the slides and then let the scientists, I think, present their work, after which I'll just make some few comments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Up until now, we have kept everybody wondering and asking what this major announcement is about. Well, until last night. I would now like to call Professor Mahoba, back to the podium to comment and to contextualize the Caprisa 004 trial. Again, I, I want to emphasize what has already been emphasized, that uh, women are taking control of themselves. Uh, they are in charge of our research, and they are giving us some new insights into what research is about. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as has been presented by, by this uh, outstanding group of scientists, this study was a double-blind, randomized clinical trial. And everybody who has done this knows that this is the gold standard of doing clinical trials. It has to be double-blind, randomized, two or three arms, but that's the way it's done because neither uh, the subject nor the researcher knows what is being done, and they're just in charge of that. So that's the first thing. The second uh, point to make is that this study adhered to the highest standard of ethics, as has been articulated here. It passed through our own uh, bioethics committee. Uh, it went through the Family Health International Ethics Committee for the Protection of Human, human Beings. It was also under scrutinized by the Medicine Control Council. So there were three independent bodies that ensured that the subject and the trial passed the best te test of ethics. As you might have read in the newspaper, the study uh, results were then subjected to peer review rigorously by the, science, uh, by the journal Science. Most of you who publish in Science, everybody knows that uh, people who win their Nobel Prizes have published in science. This is the highest that we all aim for, and their peer review is very rigorous. But let me also tell you something else. In the history of science as a journal, they don't publish clinical trials. I'm sure this is one of the first they have actually gone to publish, uh, having reviewed it, and it tells you about the quality of this research. Thank you very much, Prof. Um, those are the wonders, ladies and gentlemen, of having a vice chancellor that is a scientist yes. and a great one in that matter. Um, in conclusion, I would like to thank the media most warmly for your presence here today. The embargo was breached by some members of the international media yesterday. I am so happy it was not us. 
The respect and integrity of the South African media is in understanding embargoes must be applauded. Thank you for that. This has been a very exciting time for all of us. And at last, we can now start spreading the good news. The University of KwaZulu Natal has put together a program um, to start engaging the university and the surrounding community on the results of the study. Refreshments have been provided, ladies and gentlemen, and the room next door called Umzim Kulu. I, I am aware that there are some members of the media that would like to have one-on-ones, so we would use this room for that. And if you could make your way to Umzim Kulu, and halal meals have been provided. And um, it's my pleasure to thank you for being here. Diabule, siabulela, ngeabonga, ngosigakulu, mazenetole.